Welcome to the Creative Soul Healing Podcast. Here we talk about the connection between creativity and healing, and how we are creative, and how creativity helps us heal mentally, physically, and emotionally. Join us now. Hi, everyone. Larissa Russell of Creative You Healing, and today I have with me Mel Hoffman. Mel is an artist, energy healer, and the creator of the Sacred Journey Medicine Card deck. She lives with her wife Jane and dog Andy in Berkeley, California, and their daughter Emily lives in New Jersey. So welcome, Mel. Thank you, Larissa. It's really great to be here. Well, I'm excited to have you. So can you share some of your story and the path that's brought you to where you are now? Well, let's see. I live in Berkeley, and this is where I grew up um, in the Bay Area. Um, When my parents separated when I was about 13, my mom moved just to Berkeley, and I went to Berkeley High. And it's just a kind of a unique community. I have not really lived extensively anywhere else, so I don't really know what it's like. But um, basically, it was extremely um, liberal, and I went to a school where there weren't a lot of uh, rules or structure or things like that. So I just had the opportunity to um, be very creative from a young age. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't all great or anything. I mean, there was a lot of things going on that shouldn't have been going on. But... um, it did lead to a different kind of a life path than I might have had otherwise if I'd gone to a more traditional school. And then also I got very interested in Eastern traditions um, as a teenager and started studying yoga and ended up living in an ashram when I was 16, moved out of the place I was living with my mother and my brother. Um, And that actually led to um, a spiritual awakening that, I didn't really understand for many years um, because despite the fact that I was studying Kundalini yoga, they didn't really talk about what Kundalini was or what, what effect it might have or how to deal with it or any of those things. Um, So it took me years to really figure out what had happened. Um, And then I, let's see, I went to um, school, art school in Mexico at the Instituto de Allende. in San Miguel de Allende in 1975, when I was 19. Um, And there were actually a series of events that happened during that time that were extremely challenging. Um, And so I ended up not finishing my degree there, but coming back to the Bay Area. And I think, you know, largely because family pressure and all of that, I decided to change my major to recreation. And so I got a a degree in recreation and leisure studies, which is (laughs) funny. Um, but anyway, that didn't actually last very long and I, um, ended up being a massage therapist, but ultimately, um, it, it, despite my, um, trying to t- tell myself that I really wasn't an artist, um, for a number of years, when I got pregnant in my thirties, um, I ended up going back to art school and getting my degree finally in textiles. And that just kind of led to a whole creative explosion and getting a studio eventually. And um, my marriage to my um, daughter's father didn't last that long. And so I ended up being a single mom and an art student, (laughs) which was kind of crazy. But my mother also passed away and left me some money. So I was able to finish my art degree at my house actually, which is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, then I met my wife, and um, she's been very supportive of my work. Um, she has a very um, responsible job as a licensed clinical social worker in a hospital, and she's been there for over thirty years. So she provides a lot of stability for me um, financially, which um, I which which I wish, uh, in a way, wasn't the case. I mean, I'd like to contribute more, but um, I think that, you know, still in our society, um, it's challenging for most artists. You know, it it, it really is a challenge for most artists. And I think part of the, the reasoning for that, if you'll let me, is our mindset, right? Um, because we have been taught that the arts are, there's no money in it, there's no value in it, all of those things. And, but then also 
our, our society expects you to go from, oh, I'm an artist to oh, I'm a professional artist. And they forget about all the part in the middle. And they don't support the part in the middle. They only support the end when you're a superstar or, you know, have painted um, something that's in a museum. They totally miss all of that um, sort of in between part. <laughs> so there's a lot of pieces to that. And sorry, I interrupted you, but I just wanted to throw that in. <laughs> that's fine. Um, yeah, I just I think of all the things that I've tried over the years and and some big successes I've had and also some big disappointments I've had. Like um, it was actually quite early on when I was doing digital art, I did these prints and there's actually some of the, the prints in the background here. Um, I sold a collection of those to a company and I just thought, wow, you know, here I am, I sold these seven prints of my digital art, which is like something that people haven't really accepted yet. Um, and this is just gonna keep happening. <laughs> And, and when it didn't keep happening, it was kind of like, oh, <laughs> I mean, is uh, society and the universe really supporting me or whatever? But anyway, um, and I, you know, I also had this degree in textiles. I'm, I'm wearing a vest that I, I made the fabric for the vest. So I did a lot of screen printing and things like that. And when you look at the totem pole in the art world, um, Textiles are somewhere down at the bottom, um, along with wood and a number of other things. Um, and then painting and sculpture, of course, are way up here at the top. Mm -hmm. um, but I was just convinced, you know, I was, I was going to do this. And ironically, now I'm using my textiles in these new paintings that I'm doing. And that's been really fun to incorporate the two. So it's actually been very complimentary. Um, but, you know, I do have to say that there was a pivot point for me. Uh, I started seeing a diviner who works in a West African tradition. And in one of the readings with him, um, he told me that the spirits were telling me to create a deck. And he called it a deck of medicine cards. Um, and that the medicine would come largely from nature, from um, the animals and the plants. and um, and as I worked on the deck, which, um, was, was quite a process, I mean, it took a long time, but I already had a lot of the materials because I've been doing this, um, visual journaling process. And I took the art from my visual journals as the background for the cards. And then I incorporated it with my photography and a lot of my photography is out in the field with, um, the wildlife that I've come across um, and in strange places, like even here in Berkeley, I went to the Botanical Garden and there was a fox and the fox ended up my card. I went for a hike with a friend in a regional park and we saw um, two bobcats, <laughs> you know, bobcat ended up on the card. Um, lots of snakes, I'm very drawn to snakes, I guess that's partly because of my experiences with Kundalini. Um, so it was really a way to bring a lot of my work together. And then when I first published the cards, which was in um, December of 2019, um, of course that was pretty, you know, right before lockdown, right before the pandemic. <laughs> and so I had some opportunities to, even before I published them, to bring them into a group context with a, uh, a women's shamanic journey circle that I belong to. So I had an opportunity to just kind of try out the cards and see what kind of impact they had even before they were in that printed format. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, other opportunities that I had hoped to have to share them in public places didn't happen for a long time. And now they're starting to happen. So that's, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I've even done some, um, some parties. Um, there was a, a private concert with um, Emmy Lou Harris up in Sonoma County, north of where I live. Mm -hmm. And uh, they actually hired three of us to do readings at the concert. Um, and then I ended up um, doing a Halloween party last year and the same family has hired me again. So 
it's opened up opportunities, not just for the art, but also to interact. With mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and, and it's a great way to bring that sort of that healing energy uh, with, with the uh, creativity, right? Which I think is such an important part. My partner, uh, my wife is a, um, a, a medium. Uh, she doesn't like to be called a medium. <laughs> she, um, but she, you know, uh, does readings and things like that. And uh, as it becomes more mainstream with the cards and, you know, uh, the psychic abilities and, and things like that, as it becomes more mainstream, she's finding that there's been a lot of parties that she's been doing and things to, I think, to get people together and, and share in the experience of, and also to hold you in space um, in a, in a safe space for hearing what you may need to hear, right? And so I think that's a really neat way to, to do that. And so can you tell us a little bit more about the cards? Like you told us how you sort of made them, but can you tell, can you tell us a little bit about the use of them maybe? Okay, all right. Well, um, that was the interesting part is that too, is that I started with the art and then I went into the writing. So the art really informed the writing and um, I worked with a couple of other people on that part because the writing really wasn't my skill. <laughs> you know, the first thing that I would have thought of doing. Um, but, you know, part of that was developing how to do a reading. And um, one of the things that I talked about with one of my friends who worked with me was um, how the deck could be used as like a gallery. So rather than um, spreading the cards out like face down and picking a card and then getting a message, you could actually put the cards out face up and uh, pick the cards that you're drawn to and then um, read the message. And then the, the other thing about that is that um, taking the card and putting displaying it, like putting on a little stand or something like that or putting it near the bed um, can bring the medicine of that particular card in. Um, and then, I mean, just in general, the cards are really designed so that you could draw just one card and get a full message. So it's not really necessary to do a really complex reading. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that's interesting about me is I didn't read cards. I wasn't really into all of that. Um, and so it was kind of fresh for me. And I intentionally didn't really study other decks to see what they had to say or how they were organized or anything. Um, so all of it is pretty fresh. And there are instructions in the book about how to use them, but also just that you can use them however works best for you. So I do have, I do have the deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the other thing is I have a whole stack of, um, of my journals here. So these are the kind of journals that I kept. Mm -hmm. and, uh, recently I went through them and I was just picking out some, some images like to um, scan and, or, or photograph and uh, use mm -hmm. Site. So it was all a process of going through these journals and picking out which images I wanted to include as the background art. And then the photography came in. And then more of the medicine came in and the stories of what happened when I took the photograph came in and how that related to um, different aspects of uh, spirituality. Mm -hmm. And I, I love the divine messaging, right? So you got, you got a divine message that you needed to create this deck and you're like, oh, this is not something I do, right? This is not. But you did it. You did it because you got that message to do it. And then you've learned from that and, and the ripple out effect from following the path that you're divined is, is just amazing to me, right? Because then you touch how many people with this deck and how it's changed what you do and how you do it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I, I am finding the scope is um, increasing. Like uh, my neighbors next door are from India and um, they gave a duck to their mother who just fell in love with it and wanted to translate it into Hindi and offer it in, in India. And she, I mean, she discovered that it's a lot more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, uh, working with the, publisher and all of that and international rights and it just it unfortunately didn't work out but um in the meantime I've been in touch with a publisher in 
England and she actually offered to possibly work with me, but the, my deck is kind of different. It's not really, it's not like a standard um, deck and it's kind of hard to fit it into one of the, um, like, okay, so, I mean, this is like an old, my friend gave this to me, this is an old, um, you know, Doreen Virtue deck. Mm -hmm. And, um, I feel like those should be worth money now that she's switched and no longer wants them out there. <laughs> right. Anyway, it's just like, okay, so here, here this is, and she's not even into this anymore. Mm -hmm. And, but it has a look, you know, it just has a very standard kind of a look. Whereas, um, I intentionally put like white around the images. Um, here's a card, for example, a card called Grace. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the art doesn't go all the way to the edge. It's um, kind of rough around the edges. Um, it's not a perfectly rectangular image. Um, and I really wanted to retain that kind of um, fine art quality. Mm -hmm. So um, in a way, it doesn't really fit into um, a traditional publishing no. format. I don't know. Uh, maybe the publishing format, you, you could be right. I'm just looking up at the probably 60 or so I've got sitting right there. And I'm like, mm, I don't know that there's any two that are like, especially a lot of the indie decks, like what yours would be uh, very different than than others. And I think there's still, you know, publishers who get sort of stuck in that one format way. Yes. But I've got round decks. I've got you know, square decks, and um, I've got ones that go to the edge. I've got ones that, you know, are, are different on both sides. I've got just so many different ones, right? Yeah, I do that boring yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah, it's just, it is amazing. Um, I'm just so impressed with the, with the quality of the art and everything is amazing. Oh, I just, I love, I, yeah, I probably have about 60 right there, but I have more. Okay. <laughs> Um, so leading, um, that leads me into my next question then about what does healing with creativity mean to you? Well, I, what I found for myself is that my joy is really largely in the creative process. I've noticed that recently. It's like when I can just paint, <laughs> and I just get into that kind of flow state. Um, it's very healing. Mm -hmm. very healing. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the journaling, um, one thing that I found about that, since I was in a part of a group, so they're called soul circles that would last you for nine months at a time, is that also the group got very close by doing the art and sharing the work with each other. And that was an equally powerful part of it. Sharing is a big part of that. And you know, I have community, I have membership, things like that. And I, and, and that sharing aspect when they get together and they get to know each other and um, have that safe container to share what they've created and know that it will be respected and um, appreciated for, for what, what's been done. And I think that's really important part uh, because if you, if you create, I mean, creating is super important for your healing but if you just create in a bubble, you know, how far do you go in a bubble, right? How far do you expand and grow? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely about the connections um, to a large degree that I've made as well. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to show you this one card. So not all the cards have animals on them. Um, this one has a mermaid and... Um, she was on a float, like all these big, huge floats that have been in a parade in La Paz, Mexico. Um, and I got her image out of the, the photograph. And um, I love bringing that like kind of mythological mm -hmm. energy in as well, like the medicine of these creatures that um, I related to so much in my life. I think many of us do as well. Uh, those who, with the connection to divine 
and uh, open to different things. Absolutely. Uh, mythology and the uh, energy that brings, but also the stories that feed into where we are now, right? I think right. It's, it's such an important part. And uh, yeah. And you've turned a lot of your paintings into textiles and you textiles now into paintings and 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 all of that and you sell different uh art prints um fabric different things like that can you tell us a little bit about that yeah well over time since i'm I'm now 67 years old it's just kind of unbelievable um i've had a lot of opportunities to explore a lot of things and um what also ways of um generating income from my work. And so I branched out into um, like shower curtains, for example, which um, I've discovered actually can be used on windows because they're made of fabric. Um, and I have some here in this room. Um, I have some on the shelves behind me. And then there's also one over here on a window. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And that's actually one of the images that I used in my cards as well. So the images can go a long way and be used in different ways. Um, use them also for the two showers that we have in our house. Um, and then recently I put some of the paintings on clothing. Um, so there's a site where you can um, purchase different items, both menswear and womenswear with the images from the paintings. Um, and then something as simple as a, a mug or a phone case or a pillow or a tote bag or whatever, in addition to the ability to take originals and have them printed on paper or canvas or metal. I love that. I love that. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here today. Is there anything you'd like to add as a final note before we go? Well, I was thinking it might be interesting um, to, mm. to draw a card for the absolutely okay. mm -hmm. and see what the message is so that will give you a different flavor than just seeing the um the images and when you're drawing for someone else how do you do that i just do it the same way that i would do it for myself so here's the cards and, and i'm shuffling them mm -hmm. and um after i shuffle them which is actually not my best skill ironically <laughs> um then i just spread them out and randomly choose the card that okay yeah everyone has a different way that's why i was just curious All right okay so i got this card called primal beginnings and this card, um, like all the cards, you can take in the, the image, what the image might mean to you. Also the number on the card, in this case, it's um, 37. Mm -hmm. Might be meaningful to somebody, primal beginnings, the title. Um, and then there is uh, an image of a dog on this um, card. And that dog is significant because it um, has one blue eye and one brown eye. Um, and there were, there was a day when I did a session with someone um, and an image of a dog with one blue eye and one brown eye came up. And then later that day, I took a walk and I saw one. And so it just seemed like there was some kind of special message coming through that. Mm -hmm. And then when I um, created the messages for the cards, they're fairly, um, they're fairly simple and direct and not super long. Um, and they're all in alphabetical order. They're easy to find. Okay. Um, so I'll just, just read this. Um, you are visited by a dog who peers out at you from behind a gate with faithful, loving eyes that connect to you. Dog is a compass compassionate sage, seeing both the light of your consciousness and your deepest shadow, both heaven and earth. It exists in this moment and is connected to ancient times. It can lead you deep into the caverns of ancient black earth containing the primal materials that made you. To unite you with the ancestors whose soul connection to you is constant and who are willing to be your spirit guides. 
You can journey to this place now with dog as your protector. This card comes to you with a message to consciously connect to all the parts of yourself, both known and unknown. Dog can help you discover more about your origins and the destiny that you set for yourself. Know that you are guarded with loyalty and devotion. Yeah. 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 And you know, actually, there was one more thing that I wanted to say, and that was that I did uh, a reading for a high school graduation party recently. And one of the um, young women, the students came in and said, the, the woman in the next uh, little cubicle in the tent that you're in, <laughs> there were like six readers or something, said that you're a medium and <laughs> they should talk to you. And then it just like launched into this whole thing with an uncle that she had lost. And um, it just, I don't identify myself as a medium, but it was just interesting that somebody else would just like look at me and decide that that's what I was without even knowing me. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a real magic that comes through in these relationships and these, these events. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would just, again, want to thank you so much for being here today and we'll make sure we have all your links there. I know you have uh, the cards so that you can get a free one card reading on your website. So we'll make sure that they have the information for that. And yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. To our listeners, we will see you again next time. And in the meantime, I wish for you amazingly creative days. Thank you for listening. If you found our podcast of interest, we'd love for you to leave a review wherever you listen in.